Hey guys, this is Alex from 4 Trading and today let's do Tezos video. So, we did Tezos plenty of times in the past, right? We took some trades on it. It's one of those coins which has really good structure for the long term. Uh, I don't know much about it, but I do know that a lot of people are praising it and that their things are really good. And also that they're sitting on a pile of money, right? So that's also good so they can afford financing uh, market makers or anything like that in the future. Uh, yeah, for today we are on Bitcoin, right? Uh, slash Bitcoin because, you know, Bitcoin still has made its mind. I mean, it's still pretty much down from that BitMEX uh, uh, full thought, right? I mean, it's making its way towards main area back again and possibly going over it. But again, it is one of those areas where it's just going to be like, where are we going to break down or are we going to go up, right? So until we gain that area, we can pretty much say much about uh, alts or anything, right? I mean, it is supposedly it is losing a little bit of dominance, so... That could potentially mean a lot for alts as well, right? They could start pumping a lot more. But for that, we also do need a bull market for it, right? So I don't believe that Bitcoin would uh, go down and, you know, start going under 9k and the alts would move, right? I do not believe that because I do think that, you know, if that happens, alts are going to go continuously down even if um, Bitcoin loses dominance over time, right? <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, but before we go onwards, please guys do subscribe to our channel, like the video, you know, uh, punch that notification button so that you get these videos on front of your screen, I mean uh, on front of your page, right? And we do make videos every day, except on Sunday. And when I look at chart of Tezos, you know, some might say this is a pretty basic chart. And to some degree, I would agree with him, right? Because essentially speaking, you have two areas, right? you have two areas that are absolutely standing out, right? One is right here, a green buy area, which you would um, obviously uh, think about accumulating a position. And then you have a next one, which I would call a red area, which is obviously an area that you have to break for you to make uh, any sort of changes above the high, right? Or should I say any opportunities tagging this high again, right? And you can see these two areas are pretty clear on the chart and they both represent kind of a strength of it, right? Weakness and strengths of it, right? So the first area, <clears throat> if we go set up a trade right here, and right now, as you already guessed it, uh, the first position should be filled right now as we are speak, right? As we speak, the first position should be filled now, and the stop loss on it would be about 13%. And uh, as you might guess that this is the main area of the chart that we absolutely have to break for us to continue or for us to have any possible chances of tagging the highs again. This is the area that we most mostly want to break. So by saying that already, we pretty much have a logical uh, profit target, right? And our logical profit take would be right located right here. So you can either take the top of the box, the middle of the box, or the bottom of the box. I'm usually going to go for the bottom of the box because I do like to secure my profits, right? And if I take it at the bottom of the box, that would be 25% or 1.9R, which is a pretty good trade uh, nonetheless. But interesting part comes in if we do break this box, right? If we do break this box, then we have to look at this structure as a whole. And to this structure as a whole, what our next profit target would then be quite logical again. And that would be the, our next profit target. Because if you look at this structure as a whole, this is about the midpoint of the structure, which is again, can act as a big resistance point as well, right? So I would then move all, my, all the way back up. And that would be, wait, let me just first put a line here so you guys can see the price more of my profit target more clearly as you can see this is 2.3 and this is going to be located at 2.9 and at this point you see it is 55% of 4.3 R in that case so it turns out a pretty good trade and in that retrospect if we go for the third profit target well you already know it's going to be all the way up here because this is the area that I was originally aiming at if we go above this we do want to see price to go all the way up to here. And as you can see, this is 3.7. And if we go all the way up to there, that is actually 94% gain or 7.2R, which is basically 100% increase almost, which is super delightful, to be honest, right? <clears throat> now, we usually go for multiple scenarios on a coin, but uh, when I'm looking at a coin like this, there are not that many that I would go for. This is probably the only scenario I would go from down here. Because the problem is, I would not go for a scenario down here, right? This is too bo bottomless. And if it does, if we do get to have a reaction from down here, I would then uh, enter the trade on the pullback. Because at this point, if we fail to hold this, this is a little bit bearish already, 
right? So yes, it could happen that we wake down here and close back in. This is why I usually use Tab Trader to kind of observe a price action like that if, when it's in midst of action, right? But the point to my story is uh, that I usually wouldn't knife catch a trade down here. I would just wait for it to do its thing, close back in, and then take it again, right? But this is one of the positions uh, which really uh, stru struck me when I was, you know, uh, just basically checking Binance today because this is one of the strongest positions and we do like to be taking those positions. This have really good chances of tagging at least this, right? So that would be the minimum. That would be the minimum of rejects down here and it goes all the way back here. Well, it's going to be a bad news, right? It's going to be a bad news. But if there's alt run continuing, then I am pretty certain we're going to at least tag this, if not even this, right? And yes, if you're wondering right now, there, there will be possibilities to fill trades here and to fill trades here as well, right? There will be, uh, as if we are taking profit targets, when this moons and goes above it, yes, positions can be filled on these spots as well. So you can see by basically one trade, you pretty much see the entire chart and how it should play out and you know how it works essentially, right? So you can see this is, uh, we're gonna save this up and see if this is gonna be of a big importance in future. But for first, we have to get a good reaction to at least touch this for this chart to take start taking into effect. If this now fails and goes all the way down, well then this chart is obviously negated, right? I mean the resistance is still stays the same and if we get to fill the trade here, we will uh, aim for exactly the same profit target, but it's gonna be, a, it's gonna have to be a little bit different because the price action will change. So yeah, this is basically how I'm seeing XTZ BTC in the future. So hopefully it does play out because I will be playing this one uh, as well. I do hope to increase my Bitcoin positions just a little bit. I mean, Bitcoin holdings in that manner, right? So yes, guys, I would implore you again, please like the video, join uh, join our channel, right? Uh, in Telegram where we discuss stop losses and, you know, these areas and uh, trades. And we do analysis on Bitcoin and Ethereum daily. And also, you know, like the video, subscribe to our channel and we upload this content daily except on Sunday, right? So you're always welcome to watch it as well. And yeah, this will be pretty much it. I guess we will be seeing each other in the new one.